Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Catherine Ryan and Josh Widdicombe, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Catherine, which category would you like? Um, politics. Okay, politics it is. The answer is 10 billion. What is the question? Is it how many hours of community service will Justin Lee Collins have to do before a girl agrees to date him again? <laughs> is it the number of tweets that David Cameron's received to his new Twitter account that include the word tosspot? <laughs> If the planet Earth wore trousers, what size waist would it take? <laughs> <laughs> well, is it? Well, uh, well, it's, uh, let me check my notes. No, <laughs> it is not. Uh, is, is it how many units do I get through a week? <laughs> <laughs> is it... What does ten million sound like if you say it when you've got a cold? <laughs> is it how many STDs are circulating on the Isle of Fernandos? <laughs> I don't even have to, I don't... What? Don't take it's me out. I always thought Take Me Out was a show about people who wanted to be assassinated. <laughs> Is it how many tattoos would I have to have to look remotely hard? <laughs> Is it after how many sheep do you know that you're really not going to go to sleep? <laughs> Is it how many undeserved chances will Rihanna give Chris Brown? <laughs> <laughs> How much would Mr. T get if he went to cash for gold? <laughs> Excellent topical reference there. Is it how many sugar puffs can you get in a pillar box? <laughs> <laughs> Is it in fact, what are the chances against getting a joke about Jim or Frick? Okay, we'll move on to Craig. How many days has that sale been on a DFS? <laughs> We do need you to go to the correct answer there. Is it the amount of cuts that the Chancellor of the Exchequer is trying to find from the welfare budget? Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Annie Parker. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was how much is the government planning to cut from the benefits budget? This is the news that at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham this week, Chancellor George Osborne announced that in its drive to reduce the deficit, the government will cut a further £10 billion pounds in the welfare budget by 2017. Where's that going to come from? Well, just checking... They're not cutting friends with benefits, right? <laughs> still fine. That's still grand. Up to the age of 25. Uh, it's really, it is quite difficult for them, is it? To know, to know, because the, the, you're not allowed to like the people at the bottom end because they're poor and they're not helping themselves. So boo boo to them. And you're not allowed to like the people at the top end because they're rich and they've got all their money. And boo 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 to them. And it's kind of getting squeezed more and more. Eventually, they're just going to put the recovery on one guy called Kevin Williams of Warwick. <laughs> it's all just going to be about him. We're really backing you to get this country back on track, Mr. Williamson. Holy shit! There's a guy at home now in Warwick going, oh, God. <laughs> I cannot believe this. This is the worst way for it to be broken to me. <laughs> if, he's, if, he's, if he's been correctly chosen, he will there going, I knew. I knew that. <laughs> Will come down to me, and you're all these people, and I'm the only one who can do this. <laughs> Get my jacket, I'm going to leave out there. <laughs> come on, you're on millions this weekend. <laughs> David Cameron was determined to change the image of the Conservative Party, wasn't it? He? he? Yes. wanted to just stop people thinking of them as the nasty party. He's done that now because they're now thought of as the ruthless bastards. <laughs> party. I feel sorry for the Tory Party because uh, apparently last week they were all sent a badge saying Britain can deliver, uh, but none of them arrived. <laughs> What a cheat that David Cameron wants kids to stay at home until they're age 25 when he can't even keep his own kid out of the pub aged eight. <laughs> I tried uh, living with my parents, but it didn't really work out. Uh, apparently I didn't see the no camping sign amongst the gravestones. <laughs> he didn't kill them. They're probably not dead. It's definitely a joke, all right? Uh, <laughs> But no he did darkness. really try and put sugar puffs in a lamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, oh, and big, big news. Exciting news, though, for homeowners. Exciting news for, for homeowners. homeowners. Oh, yeah, you can kill burglars now. I think that's the yeah. gist of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, I think that's it. I'm not sure. You can put bear traps on your house uh, and <laughs> hear yelp in the middle of the night. I think basically a slapstick rule should apply. If it goes, but <laughs> you're fine. If you kill the guy, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 you're, you're allowed to be proportionate in your violence towards burglars, but not grossly yeah. proportionate. So if what you're doing to the burglar could feature in one of the Saw movies. <laughs> <laughs> Hardy film, yeah, ideally. Yeah, exactly. Try and, you know, whack them by turning around with a ladder, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a bucket on their head. Yeah. Who has received a hero's welcome at the conference? Batman! Yeah. Yes, the bit where Batman came. No, not yeah. Batman. Oh, Boris. <laughs> Boris. Boris, Boris yeah. Johnson said he wanted to be tough on crime. And this was after, apparently, he's had six bikes nicked. And you're wondering, has he really had six bikes nicked? Or six times he just hasn't got a clue where he, in fact, left? <laughs> What was the hero's welcome? What did they do for him? So they just, they kind of clapped. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't like they, you know, they, they threw rose petals or anything like that. They were just very happy to well, see him. Well, the hero's welcome. You know in Aladdin, when he's on the, on the elephant and it's, hey, clear the way in the old bazaar. Hey, you, let us do it. It's a bright new star. Oh, come be the first on the block to meet his eye. You know, you're going to love this guy. That... <laughs> Welcome. I, I defer to your definition of a hero as well. Come back. No point <laughs> in bars arriving on, near, or confusingly like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> They, gave, they also gave him, like, they give everyone at the Tory party conference, they gave him a two-minute standing ovation. That's what they give absolutely everyone, whatever they've said. It makes perfect sense. It's 30 seconds of clapping and a minute and a half for most of them to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> In bracket over there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in other news, oh. outside the party oh. conference, what have hospital patients been asked to rate? They have been asked to rate, apparently, exactly how good the A and E departments are. The question is, would you recommend this A and E department <laughs> to your friends and family? <laughs> well, what are you going to say to them? Oh well, don't worry, you've had an accident. You're going to St Mark's, and that's got a crack in A and E. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of casualty. Well, anyway, just a man falling off his shed onto his garden rake and then crawling to his laptop to go on trip advice. <laughs> <laughs> or just come home to your partner, square up and go, I'm going to send you someplace nice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've never heard domestic violence no. put quite as charmingly as that. <laughs> the, um, yes, I, I, I look like they put don't know in. There's, there's, a, there's an extremely mm. likely, likely need, or likely, nor unlikely, no. likely, extremely likely, don't know. Don't ask the people with concussion. <laughs> <laughs> How would you rate it? Mm? Cabbage? Banana? <laughs> Mummy? Cabbage? Mum? <laughs> the people who give the lowest rating are dead. So, <laughs> the results are going to be unavoidably skewed. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a very awkward conversation when they go, I'm sorry, we've lost him. Do you think he was satisfied with this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Before we went, did he say whether he enjoyed the food? <laughs> It's going to be the least accurate survey of all time. You can't, don't ask people questions when they're in pain. And what's your name? Jesus! Another Jesus! We've had a lot of They have uh, quite confusing questions like, uh, which hepatitis did the doctor fail to cure you of? Was it me? <laughs> In other news, here's a picture of Illusions' David Blaine performing his latest stunt in New York. Can anyone sum this up with a phrase? Is it, what a stupid stunt? Yeah. <laughs> Is it, giant makes mistake of sitting on lighthouse. <laughs> and discovers easiest way to charge a new iPhone. Yeah. Is it, is it, earth, wind and douchebag? <laughs> She's saying, I wish I'd never started changing this light bulb. <laughs> used to keep Bruce Forsyth alive. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, keep me plugged in. <laughs> he's, he's in fact all right, but the dove up his sleeve for the big finish. No! Well, David Blaine, he used to be an illusionist and now he's an endurance performer, mm. which just sounds like homeless to me. <laughs> <laughs> David Blaine's biggest magic trick is staying relevant. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Exactly. Yeah. The, 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 suit, the suit makes it completely safe. Yeah. It's completely, it's like there is no, 100% no danger. It is, and people are going, oh my God, it's really amazing because the, there's so much electricity around him, but he, but he was okay, right? Is the equivalent of putting on a scuba diving thing and sitting in the bath and going, mmm! <laughs> Well, I am safe. What a miracle! I am safe here in my blah, 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 blah. school breakfast. Uh, <laughs> so You'd have loved to have seen him do that stunt in the UK, though, wouldn't it? You know, people would have been chucking water bombs at him. <laughs> <laughs> And some eggs. The smell of burnt omelette. <laughs> Do you know when I lost respect for him when he did that ice one called, where he's in on a block of ice and he called it frozen in time? You're going, that is the best chance to call it chill, Blaine, that has ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. At the end of that round, the points go to Josh, Catherine, and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called Live and Let Mock. This game involves Catherine, Milton and Josh, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. Okay, here we go. The first topic, please. And the first subject is identity. Who wants to come in with that? Josh. I had to sign for a parcel recently. That's got a lot more difficult, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it used to be simple, didn't it, when you get a pen and a piece of card. Now you're given this kind of digital screen and plastic stick. <laughs> and all you can do is some kind of zigzag up and down line. <laughs> that bears no relation to any signature that has ever existed ever. <laughs> is that your signature? No! <laughs> it's not the mark of Zorro! <laughs> Checking this at the post office, going, I've got bad news. <laughs> Zorro is back. <laughs> and he's signing for every parcel in the United Kingdom. <laughs> oh, I, I struggle filling in this one, but I filled in the census last year. My favourite question was on the final page. There was a question that said, Please fill in the details of anyone that doesn't live with you but stayed over on the night of March the 23rd. <laughs> That's going to be very awkward if you've just had a one night stand. <laughs> Good morning, a few questions. <laughs> what is your occupation? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, I'm telling the government, actually, yeah. <laughs> so I think you just drop in, just go, morning, do you take sugar in your tea? Also, would you describe yourself as Caucasian? <laughs> Thank you very much, Josh Wilson. <laughs> OK, let's see what the next subject is. Uh, it's nationality. Who wants to do that? <laughs> Hello. I'm of mixed heritage, actually. I talk like a Canadian, but I tolerate my partner's drinking like an Irish girl. <laughs> I travel a lot uh, from London to Ireland, and anyone who's flown Heathrow to Cork knows that on your way to the plane, they have signs, signs reminding you how many chances you've got left to get drunk. <laughs> They're like six licensed shops, two shops, one shop. It's like what? Before I board an aircraft filled with wine to get to the land of Guinness? <laughs> like, and the final shop? The final shop is right at the gate. And, and in that shop, there's a sign that says, no ID, no sale. And I'm like, hmm, this is an international airport. How about no ID? How'd you get on the plane? <laughs> Lounge in the boarding lounge. If a terrorist manages to sneak through levels of security at the world's busiest international airport, give him a pint. <laughs> okay, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with, Milton. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> Transport is the topic. So I've got my own private jet. The rest of the jacuzzi belongs to my mum. <laughs> if you've got a sat-nav, don't put the name of the company you're visiting into it. I tried to take some mayonnaise back the other day. I ended up in Hellman province. <laughs> I mean, I've got a car, but there's nothing I like better than making a bonfire on the passenger seat. 
driving up and down, opening and shutting the electric sunroof and pretending to be a steam train. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle, he was a taxi driver, uh, but then one day he left home without any indication. <laughs> So recently, I was uh, fell walking in the Lake District. Well, it's not quite true. Uh, recently, I fell walking in the Lake District. <laughs> I was going to tell someone, but the pillar box was full of sugar puffs. <laughs> Thank you very much, Milton. OK, then that round. Close it, Ian. Go on, get back up. Our next round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of everyone's favourite radical clerk, Abu Hamza, <laughs> back in his heyday. But what does H-F-A-T stand for? Is it high-fiving always trouble? <laughs> is it Hamza fantasises about thumbs? <laughs> is he look on the bright side? His feet are terrific. <laughs> <laughs> is it Harvest Festival attracts troublemaker? <laughs> It's holy ass, a Teletubby. <laughs> Is he reading an eye chart and going H F A T? <laughs> is it uh, is it Harlow finally appoint <laughs> town crier? <laughs> is it what the British authorities <laughs> said, said to him when they said goodbye? Is it have fun, Abu? Ta ra! Is it? Uh, is it what happens when he tries to do head, shoulders, knees and toes? Head, fuck, ass, what? <laughs> I need, I need a okay. It's the start it's, of his sermon, isn't it? Oh, Hello, Finsbury and Tottenham! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Correct, Arthur, please, please. His fingers aren't there. <laughs> The H stands for Hamza. Yeah, I think it's Hamza that. faces American trial, probably. Uh, yes, absolutely. Well done. Thank you very much, Eugene. Yes, very good. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was Hamza faces American trial. This is the news that after eight years of fighting extradition, radical preacher and former nightclub bouncer Abu Hamza has been deported to America to face trial on terrorism charges. It follows a recent revelation that even the Queen was concerned that Abu Hamza had remained in the UK for such a long period of time. Will you miss him? Well, the lawyers were saying, weren't they, that they thought it was cruel to extradite him now, just before the panto season started. <laughs> I think it was right in the end. I mean, I'm as fond of hate preaching as the next man, but I think... <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I think it was time for him to go. But if you think about it, how, how terrifying... You hope the other passengers on the plane knew. How terrifying would it be if you're flying to New York yeah, and yeah. you find Abu Hamza sitting next to it? <laughs> <laughs> If there's anyone who didn't really gain from the Paralympics feel-good legacy, it's Abu Hamza. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I was supposed to, to have advised one of the 9-11 bombers and he advised the shoe bomber. This is a man with no hands and one eye. Would you take bomb advice off that man? <laughs> To get rid of it. And, and da but David Cameron said that, uh, that he was sick to the back teeth of him. I love the sort of yeah. poshness of it. He was sick to the back teeth of a terrorist. I don't think you can get more bridge than that. He was an absolute pest. He was an absolute <laughs> pest. We were all awfully cheesed off about 7-7. Seven, seven. And frankly, frankly, the fellow was the giddy limit. <laughs> According to the British police, there's been a question mark over him for some time. Mm. Either that, or he just had his hand in the air. <laughs> Enjoy them while they're still harsh. Uh, <laughs> my favourite bit of the story was that they, in court they took his hooks off him. Uh, yes, uh, there's, no, there's no need to... I think they should have just covered it with one of those big foam hands. <laughs> that would have been far more humiliating for him, wouldn't it? We're number one. Denver Nuggets. <laughs> Denver Nuggets number one. It's always been fascinating to me that Abu Hamza saw 9-11 as a sign that God hates America. And you'd think, you know, with no hands and one eye, God's not that sold on him, really. <laughs> what I don't understand is he's diabetic and he got legal aid. But surely fizzy drinks aren't good for him. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here is a picture of England manager Roy Hodgson, but can even sum this up with a phrase? Is it the world's most disappointing lap dance? <laughs> <laughs> is he saying, um, is he saying Richmond? 
Rickmansworth, <laughs> Rainer's Lane. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm going to Wembley. <laughs> Waiting in the tunnel before the game, Roy Hodgson begins to suspect he may be in the wrong tunnel. <laughs> Looking at the whole picture, is it the London Underground, where sexy singles meet? <laughs> <laughs> is it when he took the job and they said that he could have a driver to take him to matches, he should have asked a few more questions? <laughs> Are they saying we apologise for the delay? Louis Suarez has dived in front of the train. <laughs> Whoops, I've just put a yellow javelin through this man's head. <laughs> why, why, why was it why was the story with him? Well, he, was on, he was on the tube and he was on his way to the Emirates and um, someone asked him a question and he, he broke the unwritten code of talking to people on the tube. <laughs> you never ever do. You're not allowed to do that. If you're a Londoner, you simply do not talk to people on the tube unless you've got a dog. A lot of people were angry that he'd given away any confidences about the selection about and non-selection of Rio Ferdinand. It was just that he broke the beautiful yeah. rule of... You don't talk to people on the tube. On the tube, you have to sit like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I recognise you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow your Metro? Thanks. <laughs> surely, surely it was just a misunderstanding. Somebody said to Roy Hodgson... <laughs> He hasn't arrived at his destination yet. We're, we're sort of hoping he arrives soon. My stop. <laughs> he said that he's never going to talk to anyone on the tube again. I want to be there when a tourist comes up to him and goes, uh, is this Marble Arch? And he has to go... <laughs> well, well it's the only way they'll learn. That's yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to go through that. <laughs> Londoner, I'm just out from Ireland. I was I'll wondering what train I should. Oh, you're going. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll try another one. I would talk to you, Mr. O'Brien. Yeah. I would take you to your destination and carry your bags. Thank you very much. But you are a foreigner. <laughs> uh, I've been here too long and now I shun you as well. Hello. Uh, right. I'll pretend I'm on a cheap. Ask me a question. Hello, sir. I was wondering if you knew if this is the perfect place to change for the Jubilee line. <laughs> um, excuse me, I was wondering um, if this is the right place for... Um, I want to get to Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Shameful. This man is a pioneer, the first man ever to speak on the tube. And your people, instead of lifting him up, you punish him by making him coach your football team. The point is going to Josh Catton and Andy. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. Okay, the first subject is lines you wouldn't hear in a Bond movie. Agents aren't what they used to be, 007. Meet 118118. <laughs> One dry martini, shaken not stirred, and um, four Jaeger bombs. <laughs> So, Bond, we're really pushing product placement in this film. So here's your new secretary, Miss Money Supermarket <laughs> <laughs> Of Goldfinger, what are you doing with that laser? You've nearly burnt my cock off. <laughs> so, laser guided, fires at will, lovely in the hand, incredible repeat speed. Tell me, Mr. Bond, where do you get a penis like this? <laughs> MI6? No, you're a lot older than that, Bond. <laughs> Aha! Mr. Bond. It appears that somebody has stolen my cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
sorry, James, I'm going to have to remove your licence to kill. Also, I would question the validity of this boob inspector card. <laughs> Pussy! Pussy no more? Yeah, I'm post-op now. This is all real good. <laughs> Professor, how could you? You tried to mix giant broccoli with three million eggs. So, your terrible flan has failed. <laughs> And this watch that fires bullets, and I'm afraid that's all the gadgets I can give you, Bond. I'm the eight items or less Q. <laughs> I think you may need an eye test, Bond. <laughs> that sex mad blonde you've been shagging in the embassy is Julian Assange. <laughs> So she's smuggling diamonds somehow, Bond, and your job is to find out how. Just go to the hotel reception and ask for Fanny Vajazzle. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is on lighter things to hear at a party conference. Yes, I'm a millionaire. Yes, I went to Eton. But I really feel I can relate to the rest of you scum. <laughs> My name's Dave, like the TV channel. We both repeat the same old shit over and over again. Would Nick Clegg please come to Lost Property where his missing spine has been handed in? <laughs> Am I to the left? Am I to the right? I'll be honest, it depends which trousers I'm wearing. <laughs> So that concludes the conference. One more question. Would anyone like to buy a 40-foot sign with the word Conservatives written on it? <laughs> I'd avoid the hotel bar. Anne Widdicombe's in there reading Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> it has just been unacceptable cut after unacceptable cut. Why can't Boris Johnson find a proper hairdresser? <laughs> Welcome to the UKIP conference, the first conference to be held here in Islamabad. <laughs> <laughs> education, education, education. Can someone fix my auto cue, please? <laughs> Politicians, ready! Gladiators, ready! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get drunk and join the Euro. <laughs> this government say they're phasing out Roman numerals. <laughs> Not on my watch. <laughs> there have never been enough women in this party, and that is why, from this afternoon, you can call me Stephanie. <laughs> Our strategy for this Labour conference is embrace the geek and not, as I said earlier, release the gimp. <laughs> Here in support of Testicular Cancer Awareness Week, it's Shadow Chancellor Ed Ball. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I have swallowed so much semen this weekend. <laughs> My name's Dave, like the TV channel. <laughs> and I repeat the same old shit. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh, there we go. At the end of that round, the boys with Josh, Catter and Andy. <laughs> OK, that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Catter and Ryan and Josh Willicombe. <laughs> Commiserations to Chris Anderson, Eugenius and Milton Jones. Thank you for watching. I'm Gary Green. Good night. Tomorrow night, Jack Whitehall and Jimmy Carr join Stephen Fry for a spot of QI. That's here on BBC Two at 10.